previously. Okay? Now, previously, what we learned, ladies and gentlemen, was when we were talking about the quadratic formula, I showed you different types of solutions for a quadratic. Right? Because we know a quadratic, at least now we know, do you know, I'd really recommend that you just be listening to this. We now know that a quadratic has two solutions, right? But what we found out, though, about those solutions was that you know, the solutions, the real solutions, were the x-intercepts, correct? And here, there's only one solution. And then here, there's no real solutions. However, as we know, there has to be two solutions. And what we found out was those, there were two solutions. They were just complex, right? They're plus or minus i of some sort. However, we have an issue because when we talked about complex solutions, we always, I showed you guys, there's always the positive and negative. If there's, com if there's complex solution, there's always a minimum of pairs of twos because they always come plus or minus. Always. They always come in the form plus or minus. Because remember, i is you know, the square root of a negative, or the even root of a negative number. So they always come in doubles. Now, here's an issue. How many real roots do we have here? How many real solutions? One. One. However, we know that there has to be a, we know this has a degree of two, right? So we know there's two solutions. But it only has one x-intercept, one real. So you could say, well, if it has one real, then it has to have one complex, right? That kind of makes sense. But the problem is complex only comes in twos. So if you had one real and two complex, that would be a degree of three. But that doesn't match what this degree is, because we know this degree is two. Do you guys see how we kind of have an issue here? Yes? OK. Well, fortunately for us, it's not really an issue, but it's really a measure of understanding or of vocabulary. So I'm just going to write this in. And what we're going to use in our vocabulary is what we call multiplicity. And please write this down. So because you're really going to need this, even though you should have already had notes out from previous stuff. But your multiplicity, what the multiplicity says, OK? Multiplicity is basically the power of your linear factor. Power of your linear factors. Um, oh, shoot. Man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I got it still quite a stuff to go on. Multiplicity is the power of your linear factors. All right? Um, and if you guys remember factors, we wrote like this. OK? And you might say, hmm, what do you mean, first of all, linear? Well, remember, guys, when we were talking about classifying, linear means it has a power of 1, right? You guys can see this factor, my variable x, has a power of 1. So that's a linear factor. m represents our multiplicity. OK? Now, um, if this is what you're really important. If m is even, the graph bounces at x equals a. If your multiplicity or m is odd, the graph crosses at x equals a. So OK, so I just kind of write down some things. So let, I'm not really sure how that's going to make kind of some sense. So let's go into a problem. y equals, mm, let's see, what would be a good one? y equals x squared minus um, 6x plus 9. Now let's say I, I gave you guys this problem. I said, let's graph, or let's solve for this quadratic, correct? Let's solve for this quadratic. If I was going to solve for this quadratic, I would replace the y with 0, right? And then I'd say, this can be factored down. What two numbers multiply to give me 9, and then add to give me a negative 6? Anybody want to raise their hand and give it to me? Yes? Sure. Negative 3. Negative 3 and negative 3. So you could write x minus 3 times x minus 3. Now, this was actually on your last test. If you guys remember, there was, a, there was a perfect square trinomial on your test. However, we didn't really write x minus 3 times x minus 3. That's the same. Do you guys agree with me? It's the same 0 or the same factor, but it's happening twice, correct? And that's what multiplicity really means, is it's the same factor, but it's happening whatever m number of times, OK? So in reality, 
does the graph cross? Uh, so therefore, I have you know x minus 3. The way that we write it is squared. So do you guys see how this is my linear factor? And that linear factor is raised to the power of 2? Yes? So the multiplicity is 2. That means it's even. That means that tells me this graph crosses. But where does it cross? Well, it, I'm sorry, bounces. But where does it bounce? It says it bounces at x equals a. Well, how do we, how do we know that? How do we figure that out? Well, guys, what if I was just saying to solve this? Remember when we said solving is the same thing as finding the x-intercepts? right? Well, if we solve this, if I take the square root of both sides, I get 0 equals x minus 3. Then I add 3, add 3, and I get x equals 3. So that tells me the x-intercept is at 1, 2, 3. And you guys see how this graph bounces at 3? So it touches it, and it bounces. So in reality, when you're dealing what multiplicity tells you is multiplicity tells us if the graph crosses or bounces at its x-intercepts. Inter and all you need to do to find that is look at the factored form. When you have a product, or this is what we call the factorization. If you guys remember that test, they said something about factorization. This would be your factorization. When you factor polynomials out, the power of each and every, pro of each and every factor is its multiplicity. If it has a multiplicity that's even, that tells you the graph bounces. If you have a multiplicity that's odd, that tells you the graph crosses. Any questions? All I'm going to ask you guys to do at this point in time is just find the zeros.